Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello and welcome to Postscript. My name is Adam McIntyre and I am joined today by Peter Pereira who just preached a message on the gospel and how our going out on mission is in response to the gospel. Peter, thank you so much you. for being here with us today. Uh, so one of the questions that I think um, people would be interested in is um, kind of examining the differences between the church in India and the church in, in America. Um, what are some of the big differences you've noticed, maybe culturally, in the way we practice, uh, things like that? Yeah, there is a lot of difference in the two settings of this world, the way that faith is practiced. Sure. And uh, I think the issues and the problems will be the same because what is happening in India is the traditional churches are not making a big moves. Mm. While the new churches that have come on scene that are more inclusive, more non-traditional, nothing wrong with being a traditional church, sure. but when we forget to uh, include other peoples in their group, we're missing a whole lot of people. Yeah. And so the church in India is growing the same way that's growing here that is non-traditional okay. and helping people to see that. I've seen that with my eyes where there is uh, less of traditions. In a sense, tradition is not bad, but when people don't have an opportunity to understand tradition, we just give them the gospel and the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they are just taking that message and sharing with other friends. Mm -hmm. United States, I see the same similar struggles that are happening. And also, I think sometimes uh, the comfort level sometimes causes us a little more uh, to be casual with sure. our faith in the in, in United States. That's what I see. But overseas, uh, faith is so serious. It's mm -hmm. their life. Okay. This glorious gospel message for them is life. Sure. There is no like Monday to Saturday, I'm busy, I'm this. No, no, they take it right. very seriously because they know that when God sent His Son to die on the cross for their sins, it's a very serious issue. They take it very personal. Yeah. And then the response to that is getting involved, right. doing something for God. Sure. That's the way. In the United States, I think people categorize it. Mm -hmm. We have we catalog them right. and we say, well, missions is for missionaries. For us, we will go Sunday worship. But I think all of us have a mission in our lives. When you have truly received this message, something is bound to happen. Absolutely. So in India, when people become Christian, it's completely transformative. It takes control of every area of their life. Whereas here you see, to put it bluntly, almost as a hobby for a lot of Christians where they practice when, in their spare time, uh, maybe Wednesday nights at Bible study or Sunday morning for worship. But then other than that, Christ hasn't really taken hold of the rest of their lives. Uh, so I guess my question would be, for those Christians that maybe they, they say they follow Jesus, they say they've accepted the gospel, but they do not feel compelled to uh, be on mission, whether it's overseas or, or here in our own community, um, how would you challenge those Christians um, to kind of give up, uh, to, to let Jesus take hold and, and to um, feel that urge to go out on mission and to spread the gospel even here? in our own culture, in our own community. Yeah. Let me give you one example of what happens in India when people come to faith in Christ, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They become so strong in their faith. I'll give you an extreme example. They're willing to die. Hmm. And they know that when they do public confession, public baptism, right. they are declaring to that community, I'm willing to die. Hmm. And some of them, they may not be immediately persecution start off to kill them, but they are isolated from their friends, from their families, and they're daily bombarded by now you're doing something new. But in fact, the person is not doing anything new. The person has just discovered themselves that God cares about them. God loves them. And they take it very seriously. Somehow God, the Holy Spirit, connects with them. Now, when you come to uh, United States and faith practice in the United States is much of a Sunday another event for us. Right. And that's the, for me, kind of a, a kind of a tragedy for people to understand it's a Sunday thing for us to do. So Monday to Tuesday, I have these practices, that practice, which is fine. But even at the practices, 
you still carry your faith with you. Right. And there is nothing wrong in displaying your faith in some action, sure. some words. Now, I think the fear sometimes I think the people here have is, I have to know the whole Bible mm -hmm. or if what people ask me questions. Really, those are not the things that we ought to be concerned about. Sure. I think if you can share your story, right. I cannot refuse your story. Right. I cannot argue with your testimony. I cannot tell you this is right or wrong because what you believe what you've experienced, it's your story. Right. Yeah. And if people can start telling their stories just in a simple format, you don't have to answer. I don't have all the answers. You don't have all the, no one in the world has answers for everything, right. but God does. Mm -hmm. And in his time, he will open the answers to us. But for now, I think when I go home from Monday through Saturday, wherever I am, if I can just show that I'm a follower of Christ, right. you don't have to preach. Right. You don't have to shake people up, but even in actions, if they can do that. One of the things sometimes is challenging is many times when I go to the restaurants, when I eat, I see so many people just order food and eat. Hmm. My heart aches because there are so many people who don't have food. That's right. They have to wait sometimes for days. Hmm. And here sometimes we don't even thank God for the food. Yeah. That's my prayer. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. That when you believe in God, what is wrong in just thanking Him for the food that He has given? It's not your right. right. There are people, they are born on the other side of the track. They know what food means, right. the value of food. And when we get it so easily, my prayer and hope is that we could just take a moment to thank Him. Right. You don't have to preach. Right? Right? Absolutely, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. For us to be a little more... I don't want you to uh, say the word a little more aggressive in a positive way. Sure. To say yeah. that I'm, I'm pausing to thank God for the food. Absolutely. And, and there are other Christians I've seen who have done it. They do that in the restaurants and other places. But I think as Christians, if I have a relationship with the Lord, I need to show that. He's watching me. While He's giving me this, I need to say thank you, Lord. Just those two words right. means a lot. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, so for someone that is here that is looking to maybe get involved in your ministry, whether that's locally or in India, what advice would you have for them to get involved? My hope and prayer is that everyone that is listening to us would be involved in some ways mm -hmm. in touching lives, whether it's here, overseas or anywhere. Sure. But somewhere we need to have a touch mm -hmm. in this world because he says that you are the salt and the light of this earth. Yep. And it doesn't take a lot of salt to help us taste right. something. Absolutely. So a little bit of is enough. Right. I think all of us should do the little bit that you're called to do. Right. And if you want to come overseas, if you want to work in South Asia, I think Pastor Dan Slagle is the right person okay. and he's got so many resources he can guide in the right way. So I would say connect with him and he will help to organize and see what he can do. Great. So contact Pastor Dan yes, Slagle. Yes. Absolutely. Well, Peter, thank you so much thank for you. being here with us today. Thank you for your message. And thank you all for tuning in. We will see you all next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.